Welcome to Usana's Dialogue. Usana's Dialogue is back after the successful Rana Pratap geopolitical dialogue with the Ministry of External Affairs. In, uh, so today we are going to interview Dr. Johnny G. Melikya on India-Armenia relations uh, in the South Caucasus. So uh, first introducing myself, Dr. Johnny, I am uh, Dr. Angana Guha Roy, a research analyst based in New Delhi. Uh, in the last few years, we have seen the you know like there is a there is a there is a uh, you know there is an increasing uh, synergy between India Armenia relations. So I think that it is the right time to discuss about it. Before I, you know, I mean, I start the questions or before I start interviewing you, I would like to read out a small, uh, you know, biography of uh, Mr. Johnny G. Melekia, who is a Yerevan-based analyst and political scientist focusing on the regional developments, domestic and foreign policy, as well as on the security and resolution in the South Caucasus. He is currently working as a senior research fellow at the Orbelli Center, a think tank created by the SNCO Public Relations and Information Center of staff of the Prime Minister of the Republic of Armenia. He previously worked as research fellow at the Center for Regional Studies, Public Administration Academy of Arya, and is an expert at the government-funded Noravang Foundation. Johnny Melikian a policy advisor, invited expert and consultant for several Armenian government and international organizations, including RA National Assembly Standing Committee on Foreign Relations, RA National Assembly Standing Committee on Eurasian and Regional Integration, RA Security Council, Brussels-based International Crisis Group and London-based Amnesty International. In 2009-2010, he was a visiting scholar at the International School for Caucasus Studies, Ilya State University. He's the co-author of the monograph and author of more than 10 academic papers in different Armenian and international journals. Mr. Melikya is a graduate from the Faculty of Political Science, Russian Armenian University, currently is working on his PhD in political science. So, Mr. Melikya, uh, before I start my questions to Mr. Melikya, I would... Uh, request uh, all the audience to mute their speakers and if they have any questions to put them in the uh, chat box so are we good to go mr melikya uh, can you unmute your computer it's it's still on mute yeah we can oh, start yeah. <laughs> oh, okay okay so mr melikya i mean uh, given the i mean current scenario uh, that India and Armenia relations are, you know, synergizing, they are, you know, going ahead. Uh, you know, uh, I would like to uh, first uh, have, you know, hear your comments on the present state of India-Armenia relations overall. What's, what's your perception? How do you look at India from that side of the world? Yes, over to uh, you, Mr. Malikya. Thank you very much. Uh, I want to welcome you. Uh, to welcome our uh, dear colleagues and to say thank you to Usana's Foundation for this opportunity to discuss India-Armenia relations. So uh, I want to start with the following. So uh, our nations have uh, thousands history back uh, in cooperation and some communication. So the relations uh, are historic. Uh, but current stage, uh, it's, it's interesting that so since uh, independence, uh, when we established diplomatic relations, we had a more or less uh, diplomatic uh, so we had relations, more, more or less uh, cooperation. But uh, many things, as you know, changed uh, in the world, in this uh, broader region. And now, uh, probably after 2020, uh, Second Karabakh War and the change of uh, geopolitical realities in this region and uh, balance, uh, there is a new uh, page in our relations. And uh, since 2020, 
one when it was historical visit by your external minister, uh, Mr. Jai Shankar. Uh, later, we started a military technical cooperation, and now probably this year is uh, very interesting uh, with upcoming events. So we hope that. Uh, Our NFA is uh, organized from our side and uh, from Indian side. It's uh, uh, Observer Research Foundation, which is closely working with uh, your external uh, affairs uh, ministry. So uh, we are expecting high level uh, visits here. And I want to uh, remember also so, uh, to say uh, that I agree with one. A famous Indian uh, scholar and expert, Mr. Samir Saran, that our relations are romantic and we there is a need to move them to practical, more practical, more active, more uh, deeper uh, stage of cooperation where we have a uh, huge background and we have uh, huge opportunities. So, in this case, uh, speaking about in, in the Armenian relations, I will divide it into some uh, specific spheres of so political dialogue, which is very active now, as I said. Uh, another uh, sphere is now developing, so military technical cooperation, uh, where we have uh, a huge uh, contracts uh, in the upcoming three, five years uh, for. Uh, <laughs> More than billion dollars, uh, and uh, another, uh, I, I will say, the main uh, uh, direction is also uh, economic cooperation between our states. So here we have, uh, in the recent year, years, uh, also positive signals. So the uh, trade growth uh, in 23 uh, was seven percent, more than seven percent. So it was. Uh, 384 million uh, US dollars. It's it's okay, but it's not enough. So we we should uh, think about billion and uh, billion and a half million dollar turnaround. turnaround. So uh, in this case, uh, I think uh, there is a need to have uh, direct flights. There is a need to have uh, these uh, common projects and. The main basis also can be uh, connection, uh, trade roads uh, in which Indian side is interested uh, now uh, mostly. So in this case, I will say that uh, these new uh, relations between our states uh, for us are very uh, important and uh, uh, Armenian side, uh, from government to expert community, and in the field of people-to-people -people contact, we should work more. And uh, uh, even um, in recent years, uh, we see many Indians living behind us here. So they are living here, working here, studying here. Uh, we are noticing them. So this is also showing that people-to-people -people contact should be developing. And uh, in the future, we also should help our population to know more about each other. So, uh, Armenians to visit uh, India uh, for touristic purposes, other purposes, and uh, Indians to come to our region, etc., uh, etc. Et so, my uh, introduction will be this, uh, and uh, later, uh, if you will have other specific. Questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Okay, thank you. Um, I have the one, you know, just to, you have given a great introduction. Uh, I just want to know that, you know, I mean, uh, India and Armenia also share deep historic ties, which we like don't really talk about. I mean, in the coming days when the relations synergize, I think there will be a greater scope and interest among the scholars to dig deep into the into the uh, historical ties. Uh, 
I would like to know that from your uh, perception, I mean, when you look at India, what are those important sectors? What are those strong sectors or those strong aspects or capacities of India, which attracts you, which you think that are those nodal points, which uh, bring uh, immediate points of convergence between two countries, Armenia and India? Over to you, so, Mr. Malikya. Yeah, uh, I see the future uh, in the field of uh, high tech, high technologies, and India is a uh, front runner in this sphere. Uh, so, uh, another opportunity is energy sector, so green energy, and what India is doing now, and uh, Indian uh, experience is also interesting for us. Uh, uh, so, uh, Chemical industry and uh, uh, probably the, the, the main drivers which are now moving the uh, Indian economy are interesting for us. And I also already said that your growing uh, military uh, industry is also interesting for us because uh, there is a lack of uh, security in our region. As I said, uh, security balance has, is uh, changed here, and uh, uh, India uh, is an actor, an external actor, which is investing in this uh, uh, process of uh, building new security balance in this region. Because uh, when I, we are talking about uh, infrastructure projects, uh, and India is facing uh, difficult po problems uh, in the sphere of corridors, trade, infrastructure, connections to Europe. So, uh, Gaza issue uh, brought more complications to this. And uh, our region now uh, is also seen from uh, not only India, but other states as a region which can be uh, the transit region for Indian goods uh, and, uh, to, from Indian Ocean to Europe. So, in this case, uh, there is a need to have a secured roads, a stable environment in this region. And I think uh, India, uh, with these uh, arm deals, is uh, making their investment in this security uh, issue and uh, as soon as uh, Armenia and Azerbaijan will have more or less uh, military political balance, uh, it will influence the region, uh, the situation in this region. It will be, bring more stability uh, and uh, in this case uh, also we'll see more opportunities for cooperation, even including uh, uh, Azerbaijan. Because uh, if we think about real transit uh, corridor, uh, communication corridor from uh, Indian Ocean to Europe, uh, we will need uh, multimodal transport routes, uh, real roads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, Iranian port Jabahar is very important for Armenia in this case. So we are interesting. We will open an office there. So, in this case, uh, we also uh, see that uh, there is uh, interesting developments in the field of uh, creation, some uh, multilateral formats. So, Armenia, Iran, India. So, India, Armenia, Greece, etc. So, uh, probably uh, we see uh, here uh, lots of opportunities. And uh, each of us should do uh, our homework uh, to uh, bring this cooperation to strategic level, I guess. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Melikia. I mean, thank you for your answers. Uh, you know, uh, Armenia signed an agreement to purchase four uh, Swati weapon locating radars for US dollar 140 million from India in March 2020. In September 2022, Armenia signed an agreement worth 2,000 crores or US dollar 250 million to purchase four batteries of Pinaka 
uh, multi-barrel rocket launchers, anti-tank rockets, and various types of ammunition from India. Having said that, uh, looking at the present trajectory of India-Armenia relations, is there any scope of robust, you know, taking the uh, taking the relations, the developing relations, or the evolving relations to a robust defense partnership? What do you uh, think? Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, in our relations, <clears throat> I think it's it's my personal opinion. So, uh, it should be. Uh, two uh, layer uh, relations. So from one side, it should be uh, bilateral in the Armenian relations in that fields, which I already said, and not connect, trying not to uh, have uh, geopolitical uh, issues inside. So we should uh, be friends, uh, not against somebody, but we should concentrate on proper in the Armenian relations. But uh, say, uh, having in mind this, uh, we also uh, have uh, the situation when there are other states which are not interested in our cooperation. And here uh, we can uh, do maximum. So having this uh, improving uh, defense cooperation, uh, creating uh, multilateral uh, ties uh, on economic basis, on a geopolitical basis, but the main idea should be not to friend, be friends against somebody, but to be friends uh, uh, to gain natural format. So here uh, uh, we also understand that so uh, Armenia is a democratic country, democratic country, and in this case, uh, in our foreign policy, which probably uh, you might. Uh, no, uh, Armenian government is now uh, uh, providing or uh, formulating uh, multilateral, diversifying our foreign relations. So in this case, uh, when there is a uh, more larger conflict between Russia and the West, uh, it's very positive that India in this uh, geopolitical large uh, uh, processes trying to be neutral, so having good strategic relations with Russia, uh, keeping the same with the United States, with other actors. So in this case, uh, relations with India for us uh, is also uh, very positive, and we in this case are trying to to develop it uh, the way uh, which will. Uh, empower our uh, opportunities uh, and uh, here uh, I guess uh, 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 this two layer approach to India is has opportunity to work uh, because uh, nobody knows how situation will develop by the end of this year because we, we know that there, there are many electoral, electoral circles in United States, European Union, in other states. So, as I know, uh, so you are, uh, you will have uh, soon elections. So, the, the biggest election in the planet, I guess. Uh, so, uh, some geopolitical uh, problems in the Middle East. So, tomorrow morning we woke up and securing the, uh, another escalation between uh, Israel and Iran which whom India probably has good relations with, with both of them. So here, uh, that's, uh, that's why I'm saying that uh, for an approach as a global power is positive. And uh, in this case, uh, we want to develop uh, relations as far as deeper as Indian side is ready in this case. And uh, we also want to for India to have uh, their investment in this regional peace, cooperation, and uh, stability. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Melikian, for your uh, answer. Now, uh, just um, moving on to a little, you know, outside the arc of the bilateral relations, I just uh, very curious to know that India-Armenia 
Iran held its first trilateral political consultation in Yerevan in 2023. Uh, the three countries had a wide range of discussions, particularly on economic issues and regional communication. Just very shortly and in a very crisp way, if you just can say, uh, how important such cons consultations do you think are important in the trajectory of India-Armenia relations? Uh, I think they are very important. Uh, they, uh, we had nothing like uh, this in the previous years. So that's why uh, it's, it's a very positive thing that uh, Armenia is in the agenda of uh, India in the case of this uh, north-south corridor. And we call in Armenia its Black Sea Persian Gulf corridor, uh, trade corridor, uh, which Armenian side is very uh, positive in which direction, yes, to, to implement this idea uh, you might know that uh, there are two tra the directions, uh, so two roads uh, via our region. So one is uh, via Armenia, another via Azerbaijan. So in this case, having uh, uh, in mind uh, Azerbaijani, Pakistani, Turkish cooperation, which is against uh, us, which is against India, uh, I guess uh, Armenian road is more preferable in this case. But uh, other states, which I already mentioned, uh, are trying to use force instability in this region, which is also influencing in these projects, influencing this situation. So uh, that's why uh, I said uh, that uh, this uh, work, which is uh, doing here, to restore this military political balance in this region uh, uh, will bring more stability and in this case uh, we will see maybe in the near future some uh, steps uh, on the implementation of the order so you uh, there is a uh, approach uh, armenian side uh, declared uh, it's our initiative which is called uh, uh, the Crossroads of Peace Initiative, uh, which is uh, about peace, security, and cooperation in our region. So, Armenian side, uh, I will uh, explain uh, a little bit about this project, is ready to uh, restore, to build uh, infrastructures on our territory uh, to present them to our neighbors, to use them. But probably in this case, uh, it's very, uh, we, I should uh, mention that uh, there are some preconditions to do that. That sovereignty of these infrastructures on our uh, territory should be Armenian. So in this case, uh, Azerbaijan attempts to get uh, exterritorial uh, corridors, etc., etc., uh, are very negative. And uh, here, uh, Armenian side uh, already have uh, more or less calculations of that uh, and this project will cost us uh, half a million dollars, but it will allow to have this uh, opportunity to have multimodal uh, transport uh, uh, trade uh, via our uh, territory. Uh, so, uh, Real roads, uh, roads, uh, other infrastructures. So, in this case, uh, Armenian side is already implementing some of the projects. And in the future, if we will have a more or less stable situation, which and here it should be mentioned that uh, not we are the side which should uh, make some steps. So, uh, the um, Ball is on the Azerbaijani side, and uh, they should decide whether they want uh, this uh, peaceful and stable region where each of us will gain uh, from the stability, uh, having uh, this kind of uh, projects uh, flowing our territory. So uh, that's why uh, this uh, idea is uh, probably uh, it might uh, not seem, but. Uh, this uh, uh, map is showing all that infrastructures, uh, all the roads, 
which uh, will be uh, pre prepared, uh, rebuilt, and prepared for this uh, kind of projects. Uh, and uh, we'll see in the future how our situation uh, will go on. And you know, many things are linked not on or only on us. So uh, Ukrainian war, other uh, processes, Middle East. So each of this conflict or each of this uh, problem is influencing also our region. And uh, and uh, here uh, uh, we should do maximum. And in this case, I will already said Armenia is trying to diversify its foreign policy, working uh, with uh, our strategic partners who are now uh, creating new ties with other partners, developing the relation with them. So the main goal should be to have more diversified economy, trade, political and military relations. Okay. Thank you uh, for your uh, insights, uh, Dr. Melikia. Now, moving a little ahead of this trilateral, uh, you know, thing, I mean, uh, one less talked about neighborhood neighbor in South Caucasus of Armenia is Georgia. So how do you position Georgia in the geopolitics of South Caucasus? Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, thank you. It's interesting uh, question. So uh, recent years, uh, so my narrow specialization uh, from 15 years from now, it's it's Georgia and uh, analyzing uh, all developments which are going on there. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, there is a interesting developing development in Georgia. So uh, recent years, uh, we are hearing more about Black Sea region. So Georgia is now trying in their uh, your Atlantic foreign policy trying to be geographically more closer to Europe. Yes, of course, nobody can change its uh, geography, but uh, they can change the location. So in this case, uh, they are not uh, some experts, probably. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, political statements, but some uh, experts in from different institutions are talking about wider Black Sea region and Georgia is a part of this region, uh, having in mind that uh, some European uh, Union member states also are part of the, this region. And uh, in this policy of European integration, they are trying not to uh, have uh, regionalization in the main uh, uh, term of this world. Uh, so, you know, probably after Second Karabakh uh, War, uh, it was uh, created three, plat three platform, three regional part, uh, states, uh, Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and uh, three uh, external actors who are probably the part of neighboring this region. So, Russia, Iran, and Tur Turkey. So, uh, from the beginning, Georgian uh, side, Georgian government uh, rejected the in invitation to be part of this platform. Uh, even Armenia, which was not okay with this format because of uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey, who are probably the aggressors, who are probably uh, uh, having uh, pressuring us uh, with the close borders. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. But Armenian uh, government decided to go to these uh, meetings to uh, work with the representatives of neighboring states, uh, speaking about our agenda, our projects, our vision of this region, etc. But Georgian side, I see that there is an interest in the regional cooperation in uh, the developments in this region, but probably their path to EU in somehow is uh, uh, not allowing them to be more active in these regional issues. So they, uh, they are saying that they have uh, problems with, for, firstly with Russia. 
because of uh, territorial integrity, because of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Another problem in this format is that West is outside of this format for them. Uh, the third problem, which is also problematic for them, Iran. Iran part of this format and uh, this uh, uh, complicated relations between Tehran and West is also influencing Georgia uh, not to be so active. Uh, but uh, in a mid-term or long-term perspective, uh, I see that Georgia will be more uh, regionalized, having their policy of European integration. Probably, I, I don't think that they will change their uh, the main direction of their foreign policy, but they will uh, face their ge geography as we are facing now. Uh, and uh, if we will uh, move to post-conflict uh, stage, uh, because why if we will move? Because we are now in the post-war period. Uh, Azerbaijani side is uh, thinking uh, that it's already post-conflict. I don't agree with their approach. Uh, if we will solve the, our problems, uh, we'll start this process of uh, delimitation and demarcation which will close many problematic issues in our neighborhood, uh, then in post-conflict period, I guess this trilateral cooperation in our region will give us opportunity to have this economic growth, to have more uh, valuable projects, uh, uh, and uh, it will also bring uh, more actors to this region in the case not to uh, uh, push us to conflict with, with each other, but to create uh, more stable economic ties and more uh, long-term uh, economic projects. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, I, see, I see that uh, Georgia will be part of this process, uh, but uh, now they have probably uh, election year also. <laughs> Uh, they are uh, developing uh, domestic political process now, uh, and complicated situation because of uh, the law draft law, which is now passing the Georgian parliament. And uh, by the end of this year, I guess after the parliamentary elections, when the situation will be calm, uh, maybe uh, we'll see uh, more con concentrated on regional also problems with Belisi, which will be more concentrated on our region. So uh, let's wait and see. But uh, I see probably that uh, Georgia is an integral part of this region and Armenia will have no opportunity to do anything without Georgia. So uh, in the even in the cooperation uh, with external actors, in the cooperation with India and other our uh, counterparts, Georgia needs to be part of this deal because they have uh, the way uh, the, the ports, they have the Black Sea coast, and having in mind these uh, future uh, transport corridors from India uh, to Europe, uh, Georgia is an integral part of these projects. Okay, thank you, Mr. Melikia. Uh, if you just can shortly comment on, you know, there's a lot of discussion on the on Russia's uh, competition with the West in South Caucasus. I mean, anything you would want to comment on that, you know, aspect? Uh, you know, so Russia has, uh, had, has, and probably I think will have its influence in this region. So, uh, in a different uh, historic uh, periods, even after 1991, uh, in different regional states, they had their influence. So military power presence, economic presence, cultural uh, smart power, soft power, etc. So uh, speaking about Armenia, so being part of the Eurasian Economic Union, so we are gaining from that uh, Armenia uh, has uh, recent years strong economic uh, growth. Uh, so uh, our capabilities, our opportunities uh, to uh, buy Indian weapons probably also is coming from this 
deal. So we have a, being part of this economic union. Uh, we uh, are gaining from that, and that's why. So we recent years uh, have opportunity to have extra money for these uh, military spendings. Uh, of course, uh, 2020 war uh, uh, more or less we can say uh, influenced Russian presence in the some specific spheres or uh, their influence or in Armenia. Uh, uh, some uh, decreasing it uh, because uh, all these consequences, uh, ethnic cleansing in Nagorno Karabakh, uh, which is now without the cultural heritage, which is probably uh, ruining in uh, Nagorno Karabakh. And so, uh, last a couple of days ago, Russian uh, peacekeeping forces uh, are leaving now. Uh, this region uh, and the main purpose of entering there was uh, security of Armenian populations there. there. So this uh, 2020 war and post-war uh, developments on in Nagorno-Karabakh on Armenia-Azerbaijani border, uh, as you know, Azerbaijan during the last couple of uh, provocations and. Uh, uh, aggressions in to proper Armenian territory. Now they are uh, keeping under their control. Under the, there is an occupation of more than 200 square kilometers of Armenian territory. So everything which I said uh, and Russian approach to this, uh, not to be on the side of Armenia, which is the part of each post-Soviet organization led by Russia. So uh, CIS, CSTO, Collective Security uh, Treaty Organization, Eurasian Economic Union, etc. So being strategic partner of Russian uh, Federation. So Armenia is not satisfied with Russian role uh, in uh, the security guarantees to Armenia. This brought uh, also that Armenia started to find the partners outside of this region to have this military technical operation also. And in this case, India uh, somehow is uh, now uh, uh, entering in this field and replacing Russia. So uh, that's why so I will say that economically, Russian presence is still here, is uh, very uh, uh, deep. Uh, so energy sector, uh, trade, uh, investments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Politically, we now face a couple of uh, problems, complications. But uh, when you have relations. Uh, you have positive things and negative things, and uh, each uh, side has diplomats and the diplomatic community to deal with the problems to solve them. And I guess uh, in a couple of years, so on daily basis, work will solve these problems. And uh, uh, this policy of diversification is not against somebody; it's not against Russia or against Iran, etc. So it's uh, about having diversified ties uh, in economic sphere, which is now probably Armenian export is going to Russia and Eurasian Economic Union. So yes, it's we are gaining from them, that, that uh, relations, but uh, it is good to have diversified trade. So uh, not to... Uh, be under the danger if political uh, situation will change. So that's why we should have this in mind and uh, to grow our friends, uh, so our uh, partnerships uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, here I also um, coming back to the Armenian relations. And here we should have the direct flights because. Uh, it's it's very important to uh, also work on this economic cooperation. So our businessmen should have uh, opportunity of direct flights to go to have meetings with their partners.
to decide uh, where to invest, how to work uh, with each other. So uh, I think in the near future we will we'll have uh, also. Hmm. Thank you, Dr. Melikia. So we have discussed a lot of, uh, you know, uh, questions. Uh, I've asked a lot of questions pertaining to the hard, uh, you know, power and, you know, hard nodal points of diplomacy. Just moving on to the softer side. Uh, just, I mean, uh, according to you, has Indian soft power made any inroads or impact in Armenia? What is the Armenian government doing to promote soft power engagement with India? So speaking about Indian soft power, I will uh, remember uh, Indian films, Bollywood, and here uh, I was just probably uh, waiting for this question. That's why I will now say so. Well, that now we are developing ties uh, between uh, this sector. So we see that Indian uh, companies are coming here, screening films. Recently, it was an uh, interesting film which was uh, screened uh, in uh, Garmi ancient temple. So it was in Armenian social media. Uh, another field is um, some uh, specific spheres of tourism of uh, so celebrity tourism uh, or uh, wedding tourism. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was three day long Indian uh, wedding in Yerevan and each of our Yerevan citizen uh, was uh, have, having the opportunity to see uh, this uh, wedding and it, I, I think it's also part of this smart power, Indian uh, uh, soul power in, in our, uh, in Armenia. So. Here, uh, I think uh, we are attractive uh, for this kind of tourism or uh, film industry. Uh, also, now I see that uh, there, there are a couple of tour, uh, tour agencies which are organizing uh, tours to India, specific uh, sites, uh, Kolkata, where Armenian, uh, uh, history, his in trading, etc. So, so uh, here we must work to the situation uh, to have bilateral visits, uh, and uh, we'll see how it will develop later. But I think it's it's positive uh, image. Uh, in the labor uh, migration, so we have also here this labor migration. I think in this field, uh, we should have uh, state regulations and cooperation to help our citizens, probably Indians, uh, to come here to be uh, to to be prepared to be to have all uh, needed documents, etc. Uh, and uh, here also, I think the work is continuing in the near future. We'll have also uh, maybe another structure or uh, working group working on these uh, issues of labor migration. And uh, it is also uh, helping us and uh, Indians uh, working here. They are also uh, investing uh, in Armenian economy, developing it. So here, I think uh, there is a lot of things to do, but all what we have now is already showing that uh, these romantic relations are going on and uh, uh, working uh, closely, working deeply, uh, we will uh, bring that relations to uh, strategic level or strategic uh, deep. Thank you, um, Dr. Melikia. I mean, I have asked you a, a wide range of questions and, uh, you know, comprehensively answered them. And I'm like, uh, I mean, they were great insights and a lot of Now open the floor and I would request uh, the audience to ask questions if they have any. Uh, so, yeah. So over to the audience, please.
I had a question on the, this Turkey, Pakistan, Azerbaijan nexus, but I guess Johnny has almost covered the entire issue. But just a mild offshoot of that question, Johnny. I do think that the, the, uh, no, and also the, this question is in the backdrop of the recent uh, ISIS uh, ISKP attack in Moscow, the Crocus Theater Hall attack. Do you think that this Turkey, Pakistan, and Azerbaijan nexus? is going to lead to the rise in Islamic extremism in South Caucasian, the Caucasus and the region and the entire post-Soviet space region? Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, probably uh, during 2020 war, there were mercenaries who, uh, and Turkey brought them here. So nobody knows, and even Russian sites, uh, was stating officially that that mercenaries uh, are in this region. Nobody knows where are they now. Are still uh, living there uh, or somewhere else? So here, uh, as I said, uh, our neighbors are not ready to cooperate to have stable, stable and. Uh, uh, peaceful uh, relations. So in this case, I think uh, between uh, Islamabad, Baku, and Ankara are problematic for Armenia, for uh, India, for other regional actors, Iran probably. So that's why uh, from one side we should concentrate on bilateral cooperation, bringing relations to the deep. Uh, from other side, uh, creating this uh, multilateral formats, I think we will uh, counter them, but uh, with a positive agenda. But of course, uh, each time uh, we can uh, expect uh, problems uh, and even in Armenia probably we since uh, September 2020, are in the daily base uh, treat uh, expectation. So each day, each minute, we are waiting that something will be on the border, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why uh, nobody. <laughs> will better understand the necessity of peace and stability than us, people who are in the danger of, of these uh, uh, provocations, war, and etc. So that's why I think uh, coming to Moscow events, I think this uh, religion extremism probably is a problem for many states and uh, Moscow also in their context with their partners uh, should be more uh, specific uh, on the details and more uh, concentrate uh, to not to allow uh, these kind of groups to to enter their territories. So that's why we see now these um, uh, migrant uh, law changes etc etc so i think russia is now uh, revising uh, its uh, domestic uh, uh, approach and uh, they already understood that it's also of uh, this this fundamentalism is uh, this problem for them also thank you thank just you for one, okay. just one more question that i have uh, so johnny uh, the reason for not Russia coming uh, to the support of Armenia in this uh, war against Azerbaijan. I, mean, uh, I would like to know, is it because of their preoccupation with the Ukrainian war or there are some other extraneous factors? So you, you, may, you, you mean 2020 war or later? Later, like in this whole episode, I, I must know, not just the 2020 yeah. war, but for all, you know, we are we were expecting Russia uh, coming to support, you know, Armenia against Azerbaijan and this Turkey, Pakistan nexus, but uh, that was missing. Uh, probably, you know, uh, let's start from 2020. So, of course, it was a violation of 
principle not non-using of force from Baku. Uh, nobody now is talking about it. So later in September 23, we saw this ethnic cleansing and uh, West is also now uh, trying not to speak about that. Not only West, but probably the West was the side which was uh, uh, dealing with this peace process. I mean, Brussels platform and from uh, United States, it was coming information that Azerbaijan took responsibility uh not to use force against uh, Karabakh Armenians but later in a couple of days or weeks we saw this uh, exodus of more than 120,000 Armenians so uh in this case uh okay uh on the issue of Nagorno Karabakh uh, the approach of Moscow was that it's uh, in the frame of territorial integrity of Azerbaijan but after 20 First, when in March and later we have a couple of incursions into Armenian territory and the large scale provocation and aggression against Armenian territorial integrity in uh, 22, September 22, this showed that uh, even in this case, the red lines of Moscow or uh, CSTO are not working because. Uh, okay, in the case of Karabakh, uh, more or less from the international law perspective, uh, it's uh, we can uh, so probably me we can understand I can understand this, uh, but uh, in the case of Armenian uh, borders, uh, that's why uh, Yerevan since that period uh, increased its membership in. Uh, Collective security uh, treated uh, organization decides where is Armenian border. So, where is the uh, border of CSTO in our region? So, if there is a border and if Azerbaijan is inside of this territorial integrity of Armenia, so inside of Armenian territory, occupying some territories, it should be politically named that this is. Aggression or uh, this is uh, occupation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But nothing followed. Uh, that's why now, for probably yes, there are different approaches. Uh, some experts are trying to understand this uh, uh, approach uh, by Moscow, saying that they have uh, problems in Ukraine, so they are living now there. They don't want to. Uh, now to to have this second front in this region, uh, but you know uh, we see that in Syria situation is not changing. More or less, uh, some uh, personnel was uh, sent to Ukraine, but then they are starting already uh, since uh, 23. They are also expanding their presence in Syria in the uh, Mediterranean Sea. So that's why, you know, uh, now we see that Russia is using pragmatic foreign policy. And that's why uh, if Russia is using this pragmatic foreign policy, why not uh, Armenia also can, uh, in our limited opportunities, to balance our relation. That's why. So uh, it was very important meeting in uh, Brussels uh, in April 5, uh, uh, with uh, United between Armenia, United States, and European Union. So we silence economic growth. So these are the ideas which are there, and uh, Western partners uh, are eager to help us in this process. And uh, I think uh, Armenia is uh, happy with this, and uh, it's not. Uh, but but it should be understood in Moscow and uh, uh, coming political statements or MFA statements uh, from their side uh, is showing that, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, they don't understand this situation. So they can diversify uh, their relation. They can uh, not choose a side uh, and they cannot help their strategic partner, uh, but cooperate with uh, Turkey, which is a partner for them, but they also in some different places in the 
so in Africa, in Syria, so they are competitors. But in our region, Moscow and uh, Ankara are probably cooperating. Thank you. So hmm. Diversify our relations, to cooperate with others, and uh, this uh, April meeting, which was criticized uh, a lot from Moscow, uh, is not against somebody. So it's each cooperation of Armenia, each ice should help us to develop the economy, to develop our military, and to to bring us to the situation when uh, our neighbors will respect our, us respect our territorial integrity, and uh, then we'll have this uh, long-awaited stability and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Dr. Melikia, for, for your answer. And thank you, Abina, for this question. Um, Nikita from the audience has one more question. Abina, Just is this OK? One last question. Will you take it from Nikita? Oh, now? Oh, OK. Okay. Okay. One Nikki, and then we can wrap up. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So Nikita from the audience uh, wants to ask: How is Armenia handling the situation in light of the Israel-Gaza conflict, given the escalating tension between Iran and Israel, and considering Iran's position as an ally as well as Russia's influence in the conflict? Over to you, Mr. Melikia. Well, uh, there are. Uh, uh, statements by our MFA, probably in this case, uh, of course, Iran is our neighbor, if Iran is our partner, uh, is Iran is uh, one of two options to deal with the world. So one is uh, Georgia in the south, uh, in the north, and Iran is in the south. So other two options are closed by uh, probably enemies because uh, you can't call other way the state which is uh, uh, harming, uh, which is closing border, uh, which is uh, from Azerbaijani side, probably there, there are uh, pressures, etc., etc. So, in this case, uh, in this uh, conflict, uh, Armenian side uh, probably is trying to, to bring the message to both sides that situation should be de escalated because. Uh, Everything which will happen there, hopefully, the same day in a couple of hours will echo in our region. Uh, one example uh, when uh, each of the incursion of Azerbaijan during the couple of the, the last two years, uh, it's uh, the, on the, the same line, the same. Uh, so, uh, we can compare. So, when Russia was leaving some territories in Ukraine. Uh, during this war, uh, so de de defeated or in some Kharkov, etc., etc. The same period, Azerbaijan was uh, starting uh, aggression against Armenia. So they were using that Russia is uh, having the, some problems in Ukraine, or uh, they used probably this uh, COVID uh, pandemic in 2020 to close. The, their border and to prepare for aggression, and they uh, have done this uh, uh, this war, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's why for Armenia, stability in this region, uh, in Middle East, which is probably not far from us, uh, uh, hundreds of kilometers. So uh, it's the main uh, idea, and uh, probably, you know, if we take relation between uh, Tel Aviv or Jerusalem, Israel and Armenia, uh, they are complicated. So uh, their even military technical cooperation is continuing these days. Probably they having problems with uh, ammunition, uh, rockets, etc., uh, etc., et asking the United States to provide them that. But from other side, we see that uh, Azerbaijan is Two days ago, I guess, uh, uh, another flight was made to uh, or Israeli military base. And uh, as we know that, so they are exporting their weapons from this, that, this uh, military base. So probably showing that having even problems with Iran, 
with Gaza, etc. Israel is continuing to uh, sell weapons to Azerbaijan, which is using them against us. Drones, uh, other uh, things. So uh, that's why, uh, hopefully, in this uh, direction, uh, even having this complex situation, we're trying uh, to have diplomatic ties. Uh, we are trying to have contacts. Uh, so we have a huge Armenian, uh, not that huge, but probably historically uh, very uh, old diaspora or uh, community in Israel. So part of uh, the uh, Jerusalem is uh, calling Armenian water. So uh, that's why uh, each of us, we have to deal with better. Uh, not to allow our enemies use these kind of uh, complex complexities against us. So that's why when I was talking about India-Armenia relations, so we should uh, have basis of our relations in mutual cooperation, not against. So we should be friends not against Pakistan first of all but to be friends because we need our friendship. Later, when Pakistan will influence us, our region, our neighborhood, we should already think how to respond to them. Uh, and uh, probably these uh, days, uh, our Minister of Foreign Affairs is visiting uh, Saudi Arabia. So uh, Saudi Arabia was one of the least countries who doesn't want it to have diplomatic relations with Armenia because of uh, Azerbaijan. So now probably we have already diplomatic relations uh, and this visit is historical. We're trying to have uh, this new uh, stage with them. Uh, and uh, Pakistan probably is uh, now one of few or maybe the last country which is not going to recognize even Armenia diplomatically because of Azerbaijan. So we know that <laughs> it's a problem, uh, but yeah, we should deal with this problem uh, in a cooperation, uh, in a long, uh, uh, so in multilateral formats, I guess. But having in mind that we should uh, work uh, and concentrate on bilateral ties and uh, bilateral agenda. Thank you so much for your uh, observation and valuable insight, which has uh, added a lot of value to Usana's dialogue. Also, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm grateful to be a part of this entire discussion. Uh, so, uh, just before concluding uh, this entire discussion, if uh, do you have anything to, you know, I mean, say as a concluding remark about India-Armenia relations? So probably uh, maybe I will uh, come uh, back to uh, our expert dialogues. So uh, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Bandia was in Yerevan during Orbeli dialogue this series. So last year we have this, we had this co conference. This year, uh, our Armenian side with Indian side will organize Yerevan dialogue uh, uh, probably Johnny, you're not visible and audible. Can you turn on your camera and your and your microphone? Uh, do you hear me? I can yes. hear you, but I can't. See. I think your camera. Okay. Camera. Can you see him. I can see him. I can see him. I can. See Mr. Yeah. Lawrence. Yeah. So, uh, uh, it's very important to have this kind of dialogues. To have experts meeting, discussing regional situation, bilateral relations, to help our governments to to specifically concentrate in uh, the sectors and spheres where we can develop our relations, we can deepen them. So that's why uh, Orbeli Center, which is a government think tank, which is helping our government in the foreign policy. Uh, agenda formulation or in, in cooperation with uh, other states. So uh, we are happy to have this kind of valuable partner as Susana's foundation is. 
So uh, this kind of Armenian, in the Armenian expert formats should continue and uh, we are ready to be part of more larger expert formats uh, uh, to, to be guests in India, to host Indian experts here in the future. So uh, I will finish uh, with these words and let's our cooperation go deeper and let's help our states in this issue. Thank you. So now I will request uh, Abhinav, who is the initiator of the Usana's dialogue, to I mean say something and conclude the session. Yeah. Thank you very much, Johnny. Definitely, I must you know first of all thank Orbeli Center for inviting me to the dialogue which happened in December last year. It was an absolutely amazing experience to be there and to discuss and to be the part of that very insightful uh, geopolitical deliberation exercise. And I'm looking forward to more of such dialogues and consultations. And definitely it's it's an honor, it's a pleasure for us at Osana's Foundation to partner with the Orbeli Center and organize more such interactions and um, very diversified uh, initiatives like joint research projects, joint uh, writings and joint issue briefs, etc. And we I definitely look forward to a very meaningful, constructive and a very vibrant engagement with Armenia in the future. Thank you very much for joining us today.